those that treat their devices as a tool and those that look to the machines that accompany them through this world as an extension of themselves. Since I spend a lot of time working remotely, what machine I bring with me really matters. When ASUS launched the ZenBook 3 at Computex, it made sense they also launched ZenBo, the personal robot, since both of these devices are clearly from the future. <laughs> The ZenBook 3 has been a long time coming. The first netbook was announced in 2007, the first ZenBook in 2011, and after a week of living on this keyboard, I can tell you that it was totally worth it. The ZenBook 3 is super portable, 11.9 millimeters thick, and it's only 910 grams. It's lightweight, packed with a gorgeous 12.5 display. It's full HD, so none of this 4K retina nonsense here. Honestly, we're just glad that they went with a really high quality IPS panel with great viewing angles over for something that might be a little more battery power hungry. This vibrant 1920 by 1080 display has an anti-glare coating, and you can see here that though we're not bezel-less, it does have edge-to-edge -edge Gorilla Glass, which looks gorgeous. Under the hood, we have a Core i7 U-series processor, which is dual core based on Skylake. They've paired this low voltage beast with an insanely fast SSD. This is personally the fastest SSD in a laptop I've ever seen. ASUS has also managed to make something with this thin a profile actively cooled. The fan is just three millimeters thick, and when you stress it out, you can definitely hear it kick in, but it's so tiny that it's not really that loud. The processor has what it takes to power office, high definition media, it can handle multitasking no problem, and even more demanding applications like Photoshop. We were really surprised about how quickly it opened. It's actually way faster than on my Surface Book. And once I was in Photoshop, I really had no significant lags and the program worked quite smoothly. What did really catch me off guard though was just how loud this little guy gets. This is the first device and what we hope is a very long partnership with Harman Kardon. The real shocker here is that it's just 11.9 millimeters thick and it has four speakers. The two on the bottom actually have five magnets, which allow for louder volumes, lower distortions, which we immediately noticed when we were watching the Wonder Woman trailer. When listening to Spotify, some of the songs did sound a tad tinny. Movie watching is definitely more than ZenBook's strength. The ZenBook 3 feels amazing in hand. ASUS has used a 613 aerospace grade aluminum alloy that when you have it next to the MacBook feels a lot more durable and a little more premium, even though the ZenBook is way more of a fingerprint magnet. The keyboard is also something that when I first started typing on it, I thought it was a little shallow, but after half a day, I got used to it and any missteps that happened in the first hour disappeared. And then I put it directly beside the MacBook and I take it all back. The MacBook keyboard is incredibly shallow. There's so little definition between the keys that I worry that my typing speed would really not improve over time. ASUS has really knocked it out of the park when you compare it to the MacBook, which is really surprising. The trackpad on the ZenBook 3 is fast and accurate, the two-finger scroll works great, and there's even a fingerprint scanner built in. When it works, it's incredibly fast, but just like Windows Hello, I found it was a little hit or miss on letting me in. The biggest adjustment you're gonna have to make when you pick up the ZenBook 3 is that it only has two connectors, a headphone jack and a USB Type-C port, which is USB 3.1, not Thunderbolt. But you can't pop in a USB or a micro SD card, you really need to make a commitment to living in the cloud. Which actually makes the crazy amount of bloatware that ASUS has installed kind of useful. You can choose between 25 gigabytes on Dropbox or their own solution called Web Storage. Luckily, you can pretty much uninstall everything, which I do recommend getting rid of what you're not using since you will actually see a performance gain in your unit. The ZenBook 3 has lasted me around six and a half to seven hours real world, Wi-Fi connected, brightness up. I could really get eight hours out of it. Which is why at night when I head to a bar that has power outlets built in, it's just a good idea just in case I do run out of juice when I'm late night blogging. If you're looking for a portable notebook that has great performance, capable of handling large apps, multitasking, is stylish with a great display, the ZenBook starts at $1,000 for Core i5 and goes up to $2,000 with Core i7 and 16 gigabytes of RAM. So it isn't the most budget device in the market, but I definitely think that it is worth the money. If you've gone hands-on with the MacBook and thought that you wanted something with slightly more performance and a better keyboard and a slightly sturdier design, the ZenBook 3 is worth a serious look. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And as always, subscribe to our channel and like this video to show you care. I'm your host, Nicole Scott, for Mobile Geeks. Bye.